Welcome to Ben Worthy, the podcast, a special conversation series that provides a safe space for women of color to share their worthy aha moment. I'm your host, Dominique Clark. And sis, I'm here to remind you that you've been worthy. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Ben Worthy, the podcast. I'm so excited because I get to share another incredible woman with you. You've probably already been inspired by her words on social media or had your own encounter with her. But I personally have been inspired by her and empowered by her story, her journey. She is a true champion of women. She talks the talk and walks the walk. I'm talking about Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. She is an influential businesswoman, highly sought after transformational speaker, a mindset coach, award-winning filmmaker, and an executive producer of Twinning Pearls, the story of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. She's the author of many best-selling books, including Affirmed, the editor-in-chief of Cheryl Magazine, and the owner of Affirmed by Dr. Cheryl an affirmation journal and candle company. She's dedicated to her career, to helping women shift their mindset, to walk boldly in purpose or in pursuit of a life of power and purpose at any age. She's the recipient of such awards as the Mara Service Award in Dallas, the Presidential Service Award from President Joseph R. Biden, okay, and the Topaz Award from WIFTA. Most recently, she was selected to speak on a panel alongside our forever First Lady, Michelle Obama, to celebrate and promote her book, The Light We Carry. Ladies, here's Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. Okay, Dr. Cheryl, they have gotten to hear how incredible you are. And I, I just have to say this as we get started. Well, before we get started, let me say this. How's your spirit? How are you? Bus- it is amazing. I've been excited all day in anticipation of us being here together. And I know that there will be something said tonight during our conversation that will push people into purpose or enter their next or an aha moment for them to reflect and say, you know what? It's time for me to get moving. It's time for me to show up. So my spirit is on fire and I'm ready. Okay, well, you just rammed me up. Okay, I'm on fire now. I love it. I love it. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to share and start off with, you know, I've been following you online for the past few years, but to be in the room with you is a different experience, right? So you and I, we had the opportunity to participate at the Nurse Boss Summit 2023. Um, I had the honor of hosting this year, second year in a row. And I got to moderate a panel that included you. I mean, a fantastic panel. It was so inspirational and powerful. I said that to be in that room, anybody who was in that room left with something that they needed, right? They did not walk out the same way that they came in. And I don't know that they anticipated that experience. And listen, there were other dynamic women. There were other dynamic speakers who brought incredible content to the space. But the way people were plugged in, And the way that you wrecked us all in so many ways, (laughs) (laughs) it was incredible. So I said, I got to know your story, right? And in a nutshell, as, as, you know, as as the condensed version, how did you get to this version of Cheryl P. Williamson? What led Uh, you? It took a great deal of um, trial and error in business, as well as in extremely to be fully transparent with you, a lot of fake relationships, a lot of people who pretended that I'm for you, I'm for your business, only for me to find out that some of the main people were out to uh, hurt my business, my marriage, my children, everything. And so it put me in a place for probably almost two years of uh, depression. And a lot of people don't want to talk about that, but it's real. But I remember laying in bed and the Lord told me, he said, you're not going to stay in this place. I have greater for you. So I need you to get up and get moving. So I started sharing affirmations and motivational quotes, whatever he gave me, I would share it online. And so as a result of that, people from all over the world started reaching out to me. 
And so one day, 18 months in, the Lord said, it's time for you to write a book. And I said, well, what is the book about? And he said, go online and take all the affirmations that I've given to you all this time and put them in this book. So that's where the book Affirmed came from. And that book is translated in multiple languages. It sold over 30,000 copies. It has opened tremendous doors for me. And from there, I just started motivating other people through a mindset because I truly believe that whatever I say is what will manifest in my life. So, for example, I'm not surprised that I'm here with you tonight because I write down every day. I am on radio, TV, and film. So I'm not surprised when the phone calls come in. So that's really how I got here. It's out of obedience. It's out of showing up for myself. It's out of not wanting to stay in a place of depression, but wanting to live out my life fully and unapologetically in relentless pursuit of excellence. And listen, in all transparency, I am in the beginning phases of coming out of depression. See? I had a baby a year ago, almost two years, year and a half ago, dealing with postpartum depression. My husband got sick, which I know you can relate to. And I was carrying the weight of all the things and got stuck. Um, And mindset, my mindset is what started to make that shift. And that's what this episode is all about, creating a worthy mindset. I had to let remind myself that yes. I was worthy of more than laying on the couch. Yes. <laughs> and that Thank there you. was someone who needed me to be courageous enough to get up and do what it is that, you know, I'm I'm called to do. So absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what I realized, Dominique? Mm-hmm. You, the person who needed you to get up really was you. Come on. It really was you. We think that we have to live these lives for everybody else. And it's like, oh, we got to do this for our kids. We got to do this for our husbands. You have to do it for you. So you really got off the sofa because you needed you. Wow. You needed to know who you were in this earth, what seeds you needed to plant in the earth. And that's what we have to, especially as women, we have to get clear on that what our needs are, what our gift and our calling is in this life. Because what we don't want to do is get to the end of life. And it's like, oh, I've been everything to everybody, but nothing to myself. Yeah. And Right. And when you get clear on that, see, I'm clear on that. And I don't let people make me feel some type of way like, oh my gosh, you're a mother. My son is 30. We have a 25 year old daughter and a 23 year old daughter who are extremely well adjusted because they have a well adjusted mom who realized that I had a gift and a calling and a purpose. Great mom, but I have something that I need to deliver. And a lot of us women, we feel like we have to put everybody above our needs. And that's not true. You can't be good to other people if you're not good to yourself, yeah. if you don't know how to love you, you can't love other people. If you don't know how to be good to you, you can't be good to other people. We have to be in a place where we teach people how to treat us. Yeah. And that's family included. That's society, family, everybody. If you treat yourself bad, sister, other people will treat you bad because you've given them permission that it's okay. You can call me all time of night. You can email me a hundred emails. You can disrespect my boundaries because I disrespect my boundaries by taking your call at one o'clock in the morning. We don't have to live like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you say that mindset is your superpower. And I love, I love that. How important, talk us about how important a healthy mindset is and the impact that that can have on your life. A healthy mindset is the difference between success and failure. A healthy and positive mindset is the difference between being in the room and watching everybody else enter the room. Mm -hmm. So if you tell yourself, I am blessed, I'm favored, I matter, I'm enough, I receive preferential treatment, all of these things, they appear in your life. So it's whatever you tell yourself. When I got diagnosed with supraventricular tachycardia, the thing that healed me was my mindset. I told myself I would not be on heart medication. I told myself that I would not be on a heart monitor my whole life. 
whatever we tell ourselves, and we see examples of it, Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Robert Smith, Beyonce, it's a mindset thing. It is truly a mindset thing. You look at corporate giants, they told themselves that they can thrive, that they deserve to be in these positions. And that's what we have to do. You have to tell yourself and teach our children the same thing about positive mindset. Listen, and I'm I'm here for that every morning. Did you, you got to meet my girls. Uh, yes. Every morning on the way to school, we actually just had open house today for them. School starts yes. to meet. Oh. But every morning on the way to school, we say our I am and we say what we're grateful for. It's so important for me to help remind my kids who they are. So that we're, then when they are in situations where they're challenged, where that is challenged, they have a toolkit to pull from and say, no, I, I'm brave. I'm courageous. I'm smart. I'm beautiful. You know, God has a plan and a future for me. Um, so I love that, especially pouring into our kids because they need it. Absolutely. I want to. That's the game changer. Yeah. If, 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 if people want to know what is a game changer for your children, it's to speak life over your children. Yeah. It's like when you are around kids and their parents have constantly told them, oh, you'll never be anything. And then when they become an adult and, and they don't fulfill their dream, you can cycle it back and they will say to you, oh, my mom told me I didn't need to go to high school. She didn't go to high school. I'm never going to be anything. So the power of your words are the things that change your life. Yeah. So it's like going to the mailbox, expecting checks instead of bills. Yeah. It's expecting for the opportunity to come to you. It's expecting to be on radio, TV, and film. All of these things come by what we voice. Yeah. And that's what we have to understand, that we have the power to manifest the life of our dreams by our mindset and by our words. Whatever you say is what will appear in your life. Oh, Dr. Cheryl, first of all, I love that you said that. I'm getting ready to talk about beliefs. But one thing that I always say is that we got to be careful about the words that we say because we start allowing them to have real estate in our mind. What we say becomes our beliefs, then becomes our reality. And Absolutely. I love that. So when you talk about beliefs, what type of beliefs or attitudes do you feel like we, especially Black women, need to cultivate? in order to have a worthy mindset? One of the things I know we need to cultivate is that we are not in competition. We are in collaboration, right. right? Because so many doors will open to us when we work together as opposed to working separately, as opposed to, oh, she has it. So the only way that I can get it is if I take it from her. And when we cultivate a mindset of true sisterhood, sisters that pray P-R-A-Y for each other and not P-R-E-Y on each other, that's the game changer. We don't have to try to take from one another. We are better together. And when we cultivate that mindset of let me create a table and then let me invite my sisters to the table, not have them struggling when we know we have the ability to open the door and that they have the ability to come forward and be ready to eat at the table when we bring them to the table. And we have to do that. We have to do more of that. We have to show up for each other. We have to vouch for each other. We have to truly be our sister's keeper and stop talking about being our sister's keeper. And most of all, when we straighten our sister's crown, we don't have to tell everybody. Woo, because a lot of people want to take credit. Absolutely. They want to take credit or be known, let it be known that they were a part of helping elevate this person. Absolutely. Right. And we don't have to do that because if you truly, truly believe that your mindset is your superpower and that you lead a life of abundance, you don't have to try to dim somebody else's shine to make yours brighter. In fact, if we need to realize that you trying to blow out somebody else's candle is not going to make your shine any brighter. Yeah. You're going to have to steal the same shine. You don't have to try to take from somebody else. You don't have to have that person constantly say, oh, if it wasn't for Dominique, I, I wouldn't be here. It's unnecessary. It is totally unnecessary. And especially when we as sisters give from a place of overflow. Yeah. Right? 
Yes. When you get from overflow, you don't have to have your sister constantly say to other people, oh, she helped me with the magazine. She helped me with this. And I will tell you, I know this personally. It's very difficult to deal with relationships through a sisterhood perspective if every single time you have to bring them up on stage, overthink them, just do the thing, yes. and you will get the credit yes. for your work. Yes. And right? I feel like the idea of owing somebody something. Yes. People will go into that because they feel like you did this for me. So now I owe you. I need to overthink. I need to overshare and, and put your name out there. Sometimes, and, and where do you think that comes from? I just think it's, um, it goes with the mentality that we spoke about. It, it's, it's the abundant versus the scarcity mentality. So if you have an abundant mentality, you just move on and you go to the next thing, whatever that is, helping the next person. But when you have a scarcity mindset, you're thinking, oh, if she don't thank me, nobody's going to know I did it. It's never going to be enough for me. It's never going to happen for me. It's always happening for everybody else. And when you operate from that perspective, it's very apparent because you're always seeking. You're always, you're never satisfied with anything. Yeah. Especially when it comes to somebody else's business or, or them getting credit for their work. And I just think when we change our mindset and we truly, truly embrace the fact that whatever is for us is for us, that's the, that's the difference maker because this I know for sure. Yes. Whatever God has for you is for you. Nobody can block it. It's like when you hear people talk about energy. Oh, I'm matching energy. Why would you match negative energy? I keep my spirit so high that people's negative energy and offenses cannot reach me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of high energy, one person <laughs> that always goes high and not low is our forever first lady, Miss Michelle Obama. <laughs> yes. You had the opportunity to be a panelist on her, the light we carry tour. And I was like, this is amazing, but I am not surprised. Like you said, I am not just surprised to see you fill in those spaces. What type of mindset does it take to be in that space and confidently operate in your gifting when you are left and right, you know, of big giants like that? I have to tell you, it was on my vision board. See, I saw it before I saw it. I knew what I would wear. I knew what I would say. I prepared myself. So when they called me, I wasn't shocked or anything. Mm -hmm. I came into that space knowing that I deserved to be there. Mm -hmm. And see, that's a mindset thing. Because if you don't, you panic. Oh, my goodness. It's the first lady. What do I say? What do I do? Mm -hmm. I had already prepared myself mentally because she had been on my vision board for six years. I didn't know that this opportunity was going to come in this form. I just knew that it would come and I would be ready. And so that's why it's so important when we visualize things, we should expect them to happen. It's like when you get in a contest or a race and you tell the people, well, oh, I didn't expect to win. So I don't have a speech ready. To me, that's always been crazy. Uh -huh. Why would you get into something and not expect to win? So when the panel came, I'll tell you, I was excited. I ended up having um, a piece of my conversation permanently on her social media and website. Nice. Plus, I was ready. I was ready because I tell myself every day that I received preferential treatment. I worked with Michelle, um, Michelle Obama. It was on my vision board. I saw it before I saw it. So I want to encourage the people who may listen to us. What are you seeing? Mm -hmm. What are you seeing before you see it? Are you seeing wealth? Are you seeing good health? Are you seeing your businesses being birthed? Or are you seeing lack? Are you seeing uh, debt? See, if that's what you focus on, that's what will happen. What steps or what tools can you offer for someone to meet the moment? When it happens, because everybody that listens to Ben Worthy, the podcast is dreaming about something. They aspire to something. They are goal getters. So what tips or tools do you have for them 
to prepare themselves to meet the moment, such as yourself? You want to be sure about yourself for one thing. So that means that you have to be constantly saying affirmations to yourself. I'm worthy. I'm enough. I matter. Because if you don't, when the moment arises, you'll shrink from it and you'll run. You'll tell you, you'll talk yourself out of it. And you'll say, oh, it's because other people told me I couldn't do it. No, you were the biggest naysayer in your life. So you want to talk to yourself in a positive way. You want to journal about being ready. You want to read things that inspire and impact that make you feel good. You want to, if, if social media is a problem for you, where you're comparing yourself to other people, you should stay off, take breaks from social media in order to be prepared for the moment. Another way to prepare for the moment is to get up early and spend time with yourself when nobody else is calling your name. In fact, right now I'm doing a challenge with 30 women. They have to get up at 5 a.m. and they have to put their phones on do not disturb at 8 p.m. So they agreed to do this for 30 days. And I have to tell you, Dominique, that's how you get prepared for the moment because you're rested, right? You're not distracted by people on your phone. You are journaling in the morning the things that you want to see happen in your life. You are believing it. You are manifesting it. And the last thing that I want to encourage is to write down what you want to see. Whatever that is, if you say, I receive checks in the mail or I close this big deal. Write it on a sticky note, place it on your vision board, place it on your door that leads out to your car, place it on your mirror while you're brushing your teeth. Because when you take this into your mind constantly, it cannot help but place you in position to win. You win so much. I won't say you're going to get tired of winning. I wasn't, but I changed my mind. No, you, you'll be winning so much and people will be asking you, what is it about you, Dominique? It's because I incorporated these things. Yeah. And that is one thing that I have recently started. I am participating in a 40 day fast. Um, yes. We got to get up early and it's with um, Sarah Jakes Robbins. Yeah. Oh, the- yeah. Yes. I'm super excited about it. And we have been more than we can. Yes. And um, setting the tone for our day and our futures. Yes. And I'm super, super excited about that. But I did not realize how important it was to rise early and really set an intention for your day and spend quiet time either with yourself or with God journaling, like you said, visioning, imagining life for what you know you hope and dream for it to be and what a difference is made in just the way I express gratitude and my outlook on my future. And just the few days that we've been doing it, just a positive shift in my mindset towards what's to come. And so I love that you're doing that. I always hop on board. Anytime I see someone that I'm connected with or I'm inspired or empowered by doing something like that, because not only just for myself, but it's also something about being connected in community with women who are doing the same thing, who are absolutely accountable you know, who could pray for you when you're having a weak moment. Um, so I, I love that. I love that. Okay. So we, I knew we had so much to talk about and we, we're running out of time, but I wanted to, I want to be a respecter of your time. I wanted to talk about one of the things that you saw that is now a reality, your magazine. Yeah. So, I mean, I am holding your publication. Um, one of my favorites, uh, well, yeah, it was Tabitha Brown. Yes. I was like, what a beautiful cover. What a beautiful story. I am so proud and inspired by this. So did you always want to do this? How did this come about? And most importantly, how can we and our listeners get their hands on your magazine? I will just tell you, God told me to do it. Yeah. I have magazine experience. He told me that I needed to have a love letter to Black women, acknowledging them and inspiring them. And so this magazine is inspiration for everyday woman. It's the women like you and myself who we're doing phenomenal things, but the world does not know about us. So this is my quarterly tribute to 
the Dominiques and the Cheryls and the Mary Chapmans and the Tabitha Browns and the uh, Michelle Thornton Gees of the world who have been featured on the magazine. So it is quarterly. People can subscribe at CherylMagazine.com. Again, it is CherylMagazine.com. It is quarterly. Um, We're actually about to shoot our uh, fall winter cover on Friday. And this person has been rated one of the top 15 female executives on the Forbes list. Wow. We're excited. We shoot her on Friday and everybody loves her. I'll just say that. (laughs) But it was truly God. I just followed what he told me to do. He sent the team around. He sent phenomenal writers, opportunities. People said yes to me. Tabitha said yes to me. So many people have said yes and and, and help us get the word out. So um, it's, it's just been awesome. But it was on my vision board. It was on my vision board. When I did my trademark for my name, I trademarked magazine, film, this, that. I trademarked everything. So it wasn't like, oh, now I want to do this. I trademarked like five, 15 different things under that name. I lo- You were ready. Oh, I was ready. About time and season. And here you are. Here we are. Here we are. I'm excited about it. And it's grown tremendously. And um, we're looking for distribution for next year. So that's where I see it next year is um, distributed worldwide in different stores. So I'm excited. And and I just want to know, I want you to know it came from mindset and believing. Is it easy? And that's this is what I want people to know. It's not easy. Probably nothing that we do will be easy, but if you keep your mind focused, it will happen for you. It will happen for you. That's right. One of the other things that you didn't have experience in, but you're dominating, you have a stage play. (laughs) Talk to us about your stage play. My first play was four years ago, so that was Soul Purpose. And then after Soul Purpose, I actually started doing film. So I'm an HBO Max award-winning filmmaker for the documentary 20 Pearls, the story of Alpha Kappa Alpha. I'm also the producer of the Lynx documentary. And then I have three other films that are in the works right now. But a young lady met me on the red carpet at a film festival. This is how this play came about. And she said, Miss Cheryl, I want to get to the point where I want to work with you. So I said, okay, well, let's get to know each other. So she started serving. She's a writer, director. And about three months ago, she came back to me. Um, this is two years later. So she she was persistent. Yeah. And it was and she said, Miss Cheryl, would you be interested in producing one of my plays? And I looked at it and I said, you know what? Let me pray about it. And I prayed about it. I went back to her and I said, let's do it. So now on August 26th at the Academy of Arts and Letters. I'm executive producing Mama's Daughters, which is a gospel stage play. It's about mothers and their relationships with their daughters. And then also the secrets that we typically as African-American families keep, whether it be about children or our illnesses, et cetera. So I'm excited about the play. I'm excited about being in position to employ women. Yeah. To employ women. I love that. I love being able to employ my sisters and let them see that we really can work together and do phenomenal things. That's that's, that's what I love more than anything. In fact, the magazine and the play is 99% African-American women. I love that. I love that. And I'm excited for it. You know, one of the things that, again, being in the room with you, you see someone online and you hear them share, you know, their message online, but you truly are a supporter of women and Black women specifically. You truly do empower them. When I got off the stage with you, I said, I'm running down to get a book and to get it signed, right? I'm I'm running down because I, I, I know I was just on stage with her, but something shifted in me. I need to go and just have a moment. And I get there and there's a line of women And one thing that you said that I love, my feet were hurting because I had been in those heels, but I said, I'm going to stand here with these hurt feet because of what you just said. You said, hey, y'all, I'm not in a rush. I'm going to take a moment with each woman that comes to this table and serve her, right? Yes. 
How beautiful. I'm getting chilled up just for and you know what? I am too. Honestly, I felt that when you said it. My eyes, I, I'm even though you're talking about me, Dominique, yeah. I have to tell you, oh, when you said it, my heart feels so full because I asked God, I said, when you heal me, when you get me out of this bed, I said, don't let the world see me anymore. Only let them see you. And when people hug me and they say, oh, I felt something. I have to tell you, it makes me weak because I'm in it for joy because I feel like, oh, they're feeling what I ask you to do for me. And so that's why I always tell people, you know, if they're, if you're in a rush, this don't, don't stand in line because I, I, it, my signature is not what this is about for me. I want to touch the women, love the women, hug on the women, let them know I value you. You stood here. Yeah. To hug me. So how dare I look past you to get to the next person in line? That's not what this is about. I've never missed not one dollar from doing this. Not a dollar. I've never missed not one dollar. So that's why I know for me, it's about the women. Yeah. It's about loving. It's about hugging. And that's why that book exists. I have to tell you the book, The Art of Influence. Sister, it exists because thousands of women contacted me through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, email and said, hey, can you tell me how I get in the room? Can you tell me how you're able to go to events and have lines of people waiting for you? Because I've been to events where it was people whose platforms are huge. Yes. But the lines were where I was and people wanted to know why. Yeah. And so I prayed and I said, well, God, I can't answer all these people. What do I do? He said, you need to put it in a book. And that's what happened. So it was called the art of influence. And what I wanted people to realize was everybody has influence. The janitor has influence. Yeah. The crossing guard has influence. The person that brings your mail has influence. And so I broke that book down in such a way to let people know You have the ability to influence the people around you. You don't have to speak on major stages to have influence. You influence your house. You influence your children's teacher by how you treat her. When you walk in her classroom, you are influencing her to be kind to your child, whether you know it or not. Think about that. You influence the school to pay attention to your child because they know you're coming to the PTA. That's right. That's right. That's the influence. That's That's, it's not about being able to write a check. It's about moving people's spirit, moving people's soul, pushing people to their next. Many of us can write a check, but can you actually push people to their next? Can you influence people to believe in themselves and their dreams so boldly that they have no money in the bank, but they pursue that dream so vigorously that they end up a multimillionaire? That's influence. Yes. And you have it. You are the real deal. And we were blessed to experience you at the summit. The world is blessed to experience you online and the message that you are so consistent and intentional about sharing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to see. And and I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for it. And, And with that said, I like to end each episode with a rapid fire game. And okay. this rapid fire game is really short. And it's fun and, and cute and simple. Uh, okay. I say a word and you have five seconds or less to say the first word that comes to okay. you. Okay. You ready? Oh. All right. Mindset. Superpower. Black women. Love. Affirmations. Every day. Influence. Powerful. Purpose. Game changer. God. Love him. Cheryl P. Williamson. A force to be reckoned with. Okay. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm so grateful for your yes. Um, for saying yes to being a guest on Been Worthy the Podcast. I know my audience will be blessed by you. If they are not already, they've not already had an encounter with you. I know that they will be blessed with you. And one thing that I would love for you 
to close us out on. And it's something that you did on stage at the summit because Ben Worthy was the, is the affirmation I didn't know that I needed. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually have a book called She's Valuable, But Does She Know It? I um, mean, you mm-hmm. uh, Paul Kerr Grunson wrote the forward to the book. Um, he was my mentor for years. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He wrote the forward on my couple's book. Really? Yes. He wrote yeah. the forward on, on, on our couple's book. And we went to his mastermind in Barbados. You know, you did it. Yes. Oh, He's my- Yes. Okay. I know we're supposed to close that, but really quick story. So I was a full-time matchmaker for nine years before I got into media, before I got into journalism. And as a black man who was dominating the field and, you know, but I reached out to him. I went to a matchmakers conference. I stood in line, just, I didn't even know what I was going to say to him, but I knew I needed to be connected and I said, hey, I'm just needing some help, some guidance. He said, well, do you want an in- intern? Meet my people in the back and tell them I said to sign you up so you can shadow me and, and intern with the company. Mind blowing. And so I got to work firsthand with him and his company. And then I went off and did, did my own thing. And I wrote a book and he he wrote the forward to that book. And still to this day, I'm a huge supporter of yes, him and he of me. And I'm so grateful to him in my life, for sure. It's the same thing. I walked up to him in the room. He was the keynote speaker. And I said, I'm Cheryl Philip Williamson. And this is what he said. I know who you are. What? He said, my business to know who's in the room. So I'm actually writing a book. And his chapter is called Know Who's in the Room. <laughs> that is so crazy. Well, I love that we shared it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I would love for you. And like I said, you, you did this on stage. Um, I would love for you to close us out with an affirmation, the affirmation that you tell yourself nightly, because when you close us out with that, the church said, amen. Okay. (laughs) Amen. I would love for you to share that with my audience. um, And and some of those things I hope that they will take with them and, and, and speak out loud and claim for themselves. Absolutely. I will never live so deeply in somebody else's dreams that I never fulfill any of my own. I am worthy. I matter. I am more than enough. I am blessed. I am an abundant thinker. I am full of life, love, and happiness. I am healed, forgiven, and restored. I have a magnetic personality. Everything that I touch prospers and succeeds. I receive preferential treatment. I receive God-inspired ideas that produce millions of dollars. And I attract wealthy donors to the vision that God has given me. Amen. This too is you. Yes, yes. (laughs) Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson, I thank you so much for your time, for your grace, for your empowerment, and just for your commitment to your gift and calling Super, super happy to continue to follow you and see where else God takes you and all the other lives you will continue to impact. And I wish you nothing but more success and abundance and overflow in all the ways that God knows how. So thank you again. And I know that we will connect again in the future. (laughs) We are connected. I love you and I thank you, my sister. I honor you. It's my joy to be here. Thank you.